Um, but for those of you that are new, we're Eden Project Communities. So we support people um, all over the UK to connect and do positive things in their communities. Um, normally, we're doing lots of stuff face to face, like lots of other people. But at the moment, obviously, we've moved a lot of our work online. Um, so this session is part of a wider programme um, of sessions that we're offering. Uh, so some of them are workshops like this mm. and some of them are talks. Um, so I'll pop a link in the chat later for where you can find out more about those. But please feel free to join anything that you think is interesting um, or share with anybody else that you might want to. Um, OK, lovely. So I'm just going to hand over to Anna, who's just going to say a few words about what we're going to do during this session. Um, and then we'll pop you in some breakout rooms so you can just have a chat with one another. So Anna, over to you. Hi, everybody. Um, so yeah, my name is Anna. I am um, a coach at Crowdfunder UK based in um, Newquay. Well, usually based in Newquay, but I'm actually at home <laughs> working from home. Um, and in this session, we're going to cover a few different things. Firstly, uh, what is crowdfunding um, and the ben benefits of crowdfunding. Um, we're also going to um, cover a bit about what makes a really great crowdfunding project. Um, That's not good. And I'm also going to um, take you through the three steps um, to success um, for a successful campaign, um, as well as sharing with you the advice and the support that us at Crowdfunder um, offer. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, so I'm just going to hand straight back over to Anna now, who's going to talk to you guys a bit more. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm going to share my screen now. Um, hopefully you can see it. So um, today we're going to be talking about um, crowdfunding um, and giving you a bit of an introduction to how it all works. Um, Crowdfunder, um, which uh, I work for, Crowdfunder UK, um, is the, the most popular rewards-based crowdfunding um, platform in the UK. Um, to date, we've raised 87 million pounds, which is an incredible amount of money, but just to sort of break it down um, to a sort of some, a, a number which is maybe more easy to digest, um, we see up to 200 crowdfunding projects added to our website every day. At Crowdfunder, we are all about um, tackling society's challenges. Um, obviously, most recently, um, we know that lockdown um, has really impacted um, businesses, community groups. Um, and so it's, it's times like these that, you know, we're, we're really built for it. Um, whether it's setting up um, a local community hub or a local community garden, um, there's, you know, opportunity to, to crowdfund and raise money um, for your, your local community or uh, community project um, through, through our platform. I'm going to show you an example of um, a project that crowdfunded a couple of years ago. Um, it's a, um, a lovely organic um, flower um, garden um, just outside of Bristol. Um, and it's really, it's a sort of a, a great example of what, you know, what crowdfunding is all about. Oh. So I'm just going to press play. is a social enterprise. We're, we are flower growers, organic flower growers, and we work on nine acres in South Gloucestershire. We're quite unique because um, one aspect of our um, organisation is obviously growing up flowers. The other is that we support people with learning disabilities and mental health support needs, um, and we provide them with job opportunities and training. Um, and um, the whole workplace is completely um, integrated, the, the flowers and the people. We're, we're growing both. We are British growers, so people would buy our flowers for that reason. Um, at the moment, 90% of our, the flowers um, that, that we buy in the UK are, are imported, 90%. Our flowers are very sought after, and um, pro probably demand at the moment is outstripping our ability to supply. Um, so we, had, we, we know we need to grow, literally grow in space and volume. Um, 
and we needed to do it quickly and we would never be able to do it just based on annual turnover and, and profits so um, we knew we had to fundraise well I've, I haven't really been I haven't really had a bad day since I've worked here actually so I feel like it's sort of done me good in lots of ways because it's good to work and it's just like routine and and um, I never not want to come here we would love to come to work um, we see people literally blossom in front of our eyes um, as they realize that they have skills and they have something to talk about when they go home um, they have a routine they have a regular routine of coming and going um, and they're contributing to something and they're valued it's just something that i've seen and thought actually i want to be able to help support a local um well southwest business to be able to grow and to be able to help with um, the extra aspects that they get involved with. Um, and for me, being able to see that online and being able to support them so easily, but actually to come here in person and experience it um, really helped me to be able to see the work that they're doing and the reasons behind supporting them through the crowdfunding campaign. So I thought, well, let's take advantage of the brilliant support that we've got and the brilliant story we've got. And I had been looking at crowdfunding for a while and um, we just went for it, basically. And it was such an empowering, wonderful process because it really did show us that 256 people really cared about what we did and put their own money into it, which I think is actually much nicer than, um, you know, a, a big anonymous grant, really. Such a lovely example. Um, I love showing that video. Um, so um, I'm sure lots of you have heard the word crowdfunding. Um, there's lots of different meanings of the word crowdfunding. Um, but what we sort of specialize in is rewards-based crowdfunding. And rewards-based crowdfunding is offer offering something um, as some kind of benefit um, in return for a financial contribution. Um, so for example, with the Organic Blooms um, project you've just seen, one of their um, rewards could be um, a bunch of flowers or it could be a tour of, of the grounds or a, um, you know, sp sponsoring a, a flower bed, for example. So it really could, could be anything in terms of, you know, your, your creativeness. And how it works um, is that um, you, you set up a crowdfunding campaign on the website, um, crowdfunder.co.uk. Um, you create a, a the campaign um, is a, a page on the website where you tell your story. So you, you know, you let people know who you are, um, what you want to what you want to do um, and why you want to do it um, for instance with the with the organic blooms example we've just seen um, she, the, the crowdfunding project would really uh, clearly tell everyone you know where it is um, what it's all about and um, what they want to do and why they need the money um, you can offer a range of rewards um, as many as you like um, and then you set your project to go live on the website um, and when it goes live, um, you spend um, the campaign duration sharing it with your friends and your family and your wider network. Um, you can have a project that's two weeks long or eight weeks long. Um, we recommend four to five weeks. Uh, works really well to sort of build up momentum um, and, you know, it, it sort of continues the momentum throughout your campaign um, and hopefully making it successful. This is um, an example of crowdfunding in action um, and this is a community garden that was built um, or, or their crowdfunding um, for the community garden in a built up area in Birmingham. Um, so they have a community centre at the moment um, but um, they decided due to lockdown obviously the importance of spending time outdoors, um, meeting new people, learning new skills is really, really valuable. So they wanted to create this garden um, to, um, to sort of help this um, and they raised 
um, over over 1,500 pounds from 56 supporters, which is amazing. They finished just um, just the other day, actually. So, so there are um, obviously the obvious reason to crowdfund is to get um, money for your community project or your business. Um, but there are also lots of other reasons um, why people decide to crowdfund. Um, and actually, I spoke to a, um, a lady yesterday who crowdfunded in December, and she said, you know. The, the other benefits just were completely invaluable and outweighed um, the money altogether. So um, firstly, it's a really great way to validate your idea, like check in, make sure that it's a, it's a good idea. Um, secondly, it's a real, um, it's a marketing sort of awareness. It will, it's a four week marketing campaign to raise awareness of the project that you're doing. Um, and you'll also pick up um, lots of sort of ambassadors along the way and advocates of, of your project. Um, it's, you're, you're, you have lots of conversations when you're crowdfunding and meet lots and lots of different people, um, which, and, and the people who sort of support the project will, of course, um, be advocates sort of throughout your whole journey. Um, there's also, it's a great way to learn new skills um, in the process of crowdfunding. It's definitely hard work. Um, so there are lots of um, different skills that, that, that people, um, people learn. And finally, um, there's also an opportunity to get extra funding. Um, so that might be a, um, a council or a corporation that has a pot of, of money um, that um, they have, um, they partner with crowdfunder and they um, give us the pot of money to distribute to certain types of projects. You can find out all about um, these extra funds on the website. Um, if you type in crowdfunder extra funds into Google, um, you can see, but depending on where your location is, um, you know, there's lots of different types of pots of money um, for community projects, for environmental projects, for uh, businesses. Um, so have a, if you sort of go and have a look there, um, and that could be, you know, it could help you reach the goal um, to sort of, you know, make your idea happen. Um, the, the funds, you could get £100 from the funds and you could get um, up to sort of five, ten thousand pounds through these extra funds. And there's a few different reasons uh, why people would pledge on a crowdfunding project. Um, so pledge is one of the donations um, onto the crowdfunding project. And firstly is that um, they really believe in, in your idea. Um, and there's also if, um, if they want one of the rewards as well, um, that's also a really big um, reason to pledge. And what um, the really amazing crowdfunding campaigns um, do is sit in the middle of that. They have an amazing idea, but they also offer a really fantastic range of rewards. Um, and I think that that's what Organic Blooms, um, who I shared the video with earlier about, um, they did. They have a really inspiring story that the local community um, can definitely get behind, but they also had a fantastic range of rewards, um, you know, cream teas in the gardens, um, you know, amazing postcards, flowers delivered um, for, you know, as, as their rewards. We, um, to make it, um, easy for people to, or, or, uh, yeah, easy to, for people to crowdfund. We've broken it down into three steps, planning, creating, and running. Um, the more time that gets put into the planning, the rest of the journey will uh, become a lot easier. Um, we have these in three guides um, that you can download from the website. Um, you can either print them off and scribble all over them, or you can um, they're interactive, so you can actually type onto them in like, on the website. Um, and I'll um, I'll just I'll just dip into a little bit about each of them uh, now. Planning is all about defining your audience and the people who'll be interested on in supporting the project, um, and breaking them down into you know the different groups of people. 
um, if we go back to the example of organic blooms, the, the types of audiences that will be really interested in that, in that project are um, people, you know, people who want to help the local community, um, people who um, love the environment, uh, people who um, want to sort of support, um, you know, have a community support, um, who want to sort of su support uh, sort of community style projects. Um, and when planning, um, you will find the sort of biggest piece of paper that you can and start to sort of write down absolutely everyone in one in these groups. Um, so whether it's a local business that might be able to help you or um, it might be a local sort of gardening Facebook group um, that you're, you're in and, and you can share the, the project with. So once you've established who in your, um, you know, in your network and your wider network um, will want to support the project, you then need to create um, a crowdfunding campaign on our website. It's, it's really easy. We've, um, it's a step-by-step -step process. Um, we ask you a question and you answer it. Um, so for example, what's the name of your project? And you, you type it in. There's also lots of guidance on the right hand side of the page as you as you fill out the crowdfunding um, information um, to give you any sort of tips um, to help you. Um, and there's also our support team, um, Christine and Charlie, who can help if you if you get stuck or if you have an issue. Um, they're on hand. Um, you can email them and they'll, they'll definitely help you get your project up and running. This is an example of a project page. Um, again, this was actually inspired um, due to the lockdown. It's a, a sort of online um, group um, for exercise um, for um, older people who can't actually sort of leave um, their houses at the moment um, and who are sort of obviously shielding. So um, it's, yeah, it did really well in July um, and obviously helping lots of people throughout this time. Um, as the as the page looks, um, there's a sort of big title at the top, um, a video underneath. Um, you don't necessarily need to have a, a crowdfunding video, um, but it's definitely quite, um, it, it's great if you can. Um, firstly, it's a great learning experience to, to make the video and to, um, to sort of understand your project through, through doing one. Um, but it's also, it sort of gets across what you what you want to tell people about your story um, in a much easier way than writing it down. Um, underneath there are, um, as you can see where she's written, who am I? Um, that's where the main body of text is, where um, she sort of broke it down into who am I, what am I trying to do and where, I'm, where am I going to do it? Um, and then on the right hand side, at the bottom right, we have the rewards on offer. Um, you can actually um, feature a sort of top reward, um, which is what that little orange um, label is, which um, will put it at the top for the most popular rewards. Um, you can also see that you, you can share it on Facebook and um, all the social media channels um, as well, directly from the page. And finally, the last, um, the last section of um, crowdfunding um, is obviously running the campaign. So over the course of the four, five, six weeks, um, you'll, you'll need to reach out to all of those audiences that you, you established in the planning stage. And it's really important to not reach out to everybody on day one, but to stagger it across those four weeks. Um, firstly, so that you've, you know, you've got um, other things, you've got sort of, uh, You've got things to do over the sort of course of the time your project's live, but it's really important to wait until the time is right to reach out to people. Um, so, for instance, if you're reaching out to a, a local newspaper, it looks um, much more, you know, it's going to be um, much better received if you're sort of almost raised all your funds already, um, rather than sending it to them when it's on zero percent. Um, we use an example of a, a restaurant. If you see a, a restaurant um, that's empty um, and you walk past it, it, 
you're not that enticed to go inside and eat in it. Uh, but the more you know, people go in, um, the more it starts to fill out once they put a few people in the window, um, it gets busier and busier and busier, um, and the more and more people who want to get on board. Um, and that's the same with crowdfunding. Um, you need to start with your friends and family and your core network and then expand um, outwards to sort of people in your wider network. We have lots of um, help on offer um, to help you succeed crowdfunding um, with your crowdfunding. We have things called the Accelerator Programs, which is a two week online um, course hosted on Facebook where we, you, we take you through the steps of crowdfunding and by the end of it, you should have um, a really great looking crowdfunding page. Um, and we also offer online guides and, um, and lots of sort of email support. Um, you can also book calls with um, either myself or one of the other coaches as well if you do need help. And how to get started. Um, so if you visit crowdfunder.co.uk you can have a look at all of the amazing projects already on there um, and all you need to do is click the start crowdfunding button um, and it will start um, you know, indicating what, what you need to do to, um, to crowdfund. You don't, have to, um, you don't have to go live on the website until you're ready. You can, you know, you can be in draft mode for um, as long as you need. So it, it's not, you know, signing up doesn't sort of make you have to sort of put your crowdfunding live straight away. And if you need any help in terms of um, support, you can email our team um, at support at crowdfunder.co.uk. But you can also, um, you can email me at anna at crowdfunder.co.uk as well if you've got, um, if you're specifically, um, you're looking to crowdfund and you need some specific help, I'm more than happy to help. And so hopefully that is quite, um, a helpful overview on crowdfunding um, and you can have a look at all of the amazing projects already on there um, and all you need to do is click the start crowdfunding button um, and it will start um, you know indicating what what you need to do to um, to crowdfund you don't have to um, you don't have to go live on the website until you're ready you can you know you can be in draft mode for um, as long as you need so it's not, you know, signing up doesn't sort of make you have to sort of put your crowdfunding live straight away. And if you need any help in terms of um, support, you can email our team um, at support at crowdfunder.co.uk. But you can also, um, you can email me at anna at crowdfunder.co.uk as well if you've got, um, if you're specifically, um, you're looking to crowdfund and you need some specific help, I'm more than happy to help. And so hopefully that is quite um, a helpful overview on crowdfunding. Um, and yeah, I look forward to getting some questions. Thank you, Anna. Um, really helpful overview, maybe more than an overview. I feel like I want to start a crowdfunder. Yes. Sarah, would you like to ask your question? Yeah, it's the same one as I put in chat, but it was, um... Anna, when you mentioned about the one-to-one -one coaching and the extra support, is that included in the crowdfunding package or is that an extra cost to people? So if you um, touch base with our support team, um, they can link you up with a coach um, and it's included. It's, it's not guaranteed, um, but for instance, you can definitely reach out to me and I'm more than happy to spend sort of half an hour um, chatting through your campaign um, before you go live or even when you're, when you're live. Um, so it's not, a, um, it's not a guaranteed coach, but um, there's lots of us to sort of help you along the way. Thank you. No worries. Um, and then, Saoirse, you've asked, is there anything which you'd say shouldn't be crowdfunded for? Um, so, earlier when I mentioned about having um, the two reasons why people pledge, one being that people believe in the idea and the second being that um, they want, want to, you know, the rewards on offer are great. I think the, the projects that do the best of when they sort of tick either of those boxes or ideally both of them. If you feel like um, 
for instance, if you if it was like a business and you were setting up just purely just to make yourself money, then it's a, really a hard story to sell. Whereas if you're setting up a business that will give value to lots of people, or it's um, you know it's a bakery, so lots of people will get lots of cakes and things, then it's um, you know then it's a, it's a, um, worth crowdfunding it for. So I think it's it's the story that you set you sell. Um, if you've got a specific example, I'm more than happy to ask, um, you know, answer if I think, you know, that's crowd work, crowdfunding worthy. <laughs> um, Jan's asking about the costs. Um, so there are no fees attached to a crowdfunding campaign if your project is unsuccessful. If you want to crowdfund, um, there is a 3% um, plus VAT fee for a rewards-based crowdfunding campaign. Um, I can send it um, to you in an email, but there's also um, a card um, payment, uh, card transaction fee as well from Stripe, our card pro payment provider. Um, if you have a donations only crowdfunding project, so you can't offer, if, if you don't offer rewards, so that could be, you know, it could be um, someone running a marathon, it, it could be, you, you might have sort of seen those kind of style projects. There is that, it, there's no fees, there's no crowdfunder platform fees for that one, um, but there, there still is the card transaction fees. Um, hopefully that helps, but I can send it to you. Um, in, in the email, if you wish. Um, I always suggest to put sort of six or 7% aside just to cover fees and to make sure you've got some leftover um, just so that you, you know, you're, you're happy with that. Can you see um, Penny's um, question in the chat, Anna? So she said, do you have any guidance for project rewards um, when the project does not have obvious rewards, e.g. we don't make anything physical, um, our activities are social? Yeah, so um, so rewards, you know, aren't essential. You can do donations only crowdfunding campaigns, but you can definitely be creative with rewards. And it doesn't necessarily have to be things that you're going to be doing um, for the next few years. It might just be one-off things that you've done. You're going to do for um, for your campaign. Um, so if you don't have a sort of physical product or anything like that, and if you do social activities, I think um, you, you've, there's obviously sort of skills that you have that you can give to other people. So maybe get people involved in those kind of social activities if they want, or, um, or you know, is there anything that you can offer that um, is a sort of branch off what you what you want to um what you want to to make as your crowdfunding campaign um the best thing with rewards is that you can um i would suggest to get a couple of friends together and um sort of basically have a bit of a creative session um a, a reward could be a a product a service a sponsorship a um an event or experience, but also it could just be a general thank you. So it could be um, a thank you on your social media, for example. Um, so there's lots of different opportunities for th the rewards. And in the creating guide, there's lots of information on rewards. Um, so Michelle's asking about um, striking, how do people strike the balance between offering great rewards, but not spending too much on them? in order to raise maximum amount for your campaign. Um, so I think that's a good question because um, you obviously want to sort of maximize the amount that you raise rather than spending all the money on sort of the, the rewards that you're gonna be offering. Um, a couple of options would be to think about rewards which don't cost you anything or cost you very little. So when I talk about just before about, um, is there anything that you, know, you can offer that if, if any of your team have a skill that you can offer um, a session or a, an event or something that's low cost but is a really lovely experience for people. Um, also speaking to local businesses, um, they, you know, local businesses or um, charities might want to help and support the, the project if it's a, you know, 
relevant to them if you frame it right um, and they might be able to donate something that you can offer as a reward as well um, you can you can have you can limit the amount of rewards that you offer um, so you can if you've got one donated from a local business a hamper for example um, you can just put one one on your on your campaign and then can I just add in there something that might help those that are thinking what would I reward and I don't have much um, a local in Northern Ireland, a GAA club, a Gaelic Athletics Club, was crowdfunding um, at a local level for to raise funds to create a gym. And um, they didn't have things, well, they had things that they could offer for larger amounts. But what they offered everybody was that everyone's names would get put up on a wall in the gym so mm -hmm. that they could see who had helped make it happen very simple thing in the end, you know, like they put um, some kind of a wallpaper print off it all. But there are different ways that you can reward people that isn't a physical thing, as you said, and I thought that might be a nice example. Yeah, no, that's a great example. Thank you. And we've got um, a couple more questions in the chat. Can I ask you a question? Sorry to interrupt. Are there any real no-nos with crowdfunding? Anything that you really would, wouldn't recommend or that you see with um, crowdfunders that aren't very successful? So I think um, the, the crowdfunding isn't, you know, it isn't impossible to do. And I think the things that people um, where people fail it might be lack of preparation is probably the big thing um they put it up on the website and they feel you know it's going to magically be funded by lots of sort of rich people on the internet which unfortunately is not the case it's um a lot harder work than that um so i'd say making a, a solid plan is is what what will sort of prevent people um failing and also you know as I said earlier about painting a really clear picture on your crowdfunding page, it's really hard to read a huge long thing of text, break it up with headings and pictures. If you're thinking of doing a community garden, put pictures of, um, you know, the team who's involved, um, what you, you know, the flowers and the garden that you em em envisage, um, and also of the location of where you're, where you're going to be having it. So, the space now and then maybe what you imagine in, in the future. Sure, thank you. Um, okay, let's go back to our questions. Um, so we've got one from Samantha um, asking, how does the transfer of funds raised work? Um, do you need to transfer it to a bank account straight away or can it wait in crowdfunder for a while? Um, so usually with the funds, um, when your project closes successfully, um, they will be transferred between seven and 10 working days after your project closing. Um, a, your question about can it wait in crowdfunder for a while, that might be something we need to speak to support um, about if you, if you want to request that. Um, I know that, that, that there might be a possibility for a pay delay, but um, that's usually how it works. Um, and then, there's one from um, David Folland that follows on from that question. Yep. So is there an upper limit on financial targets and is it suitable for a big project or, or does it tend to work for smaller and potentially more achievable amounts? And what happens if, okay, there's lots of questions. And what happens if the target is not reached um, if it's aimed at raising a specific amount? Um, so is there an upper limit on financial targets? There is no upper limit, but I always recommend a realistic target. You want it to be achievable. Um, putting it at one million might be a bit much. You know, it's you, you, you know you've got to establish how big your crowd is and how um, how much you you realistically can can make. Um, is it suitable for a big project or does it tend to work for smaller, potentially more achievable amounts? Um, we have lots of uh, very big projects as well. So if you are looking to crowdfund more, um, that is a possibility. Um, we've got a team that sort of handles um, projects that are looking to raise over £50,000. So you can contact them. It's called a big, big projects if you go to a crowdfunder. Um, and then what happens if targets is not reached? And um, so um, there's 
there's two actually routes when you set up your campaign um, to choose either everything you raise from the crowd you get to keep or um, the second one is all or nothing which means um, you have to hit your target to, to keep anything um, so the all or nothing route works quite well if you have to to raise a certain amount to actually deliver the project whereas um, the other the other route which is a keep what you raise um, it's called keep what you raise um, and that works quite well if you can deliver you know the project even if you don't raise that full amount um, so if you're if you have chosen that all or nothing route where you have to hit the target otherwise um, you don't keep anything everyone will be refunded um, after your campaign closes um, I think that's I think that's all of our questions that we had in the chat. Um, oh, Lisa. Um, I just wondered, on one of the um, example web pages that you showed, Anna, it had stretch targets and it said that it reached 103%. So I just wondered, is that just if it hits the target, it just keeps rolling until the end date of the campaign? Um, yeah, yes. basically just wondered what that's a good question so we have um so yeah so we have things called stretch targets for once you hit your um hit your first target um once you hit your first target you can basically still keep fundraising and to encourage people to keep um supporting your project we created stretch targets and usually stretch targets work really well if it's for something specific um like a more specific thing to sort of to add to the project so say if you were um raising money for a um a van for your business and you bought the van and you you hit that target and you want to raise a bit more money maybe that can go towards you know upgrading it to you know a uh, a sort of a, a, a sort of bigger location or it might be more of a um like say it was going from a mobile van to some kind of like fixed location for for example if it was a shop um so that that stretch target means you just keep fundraising and you can keep people being interested in in the campaign um, and you can add as many stretch targets as you want um when you crowdfund okay Thank you, Anna. Um, I think we've got time for probably a couple more questions. Um, so we've just had one in the chat from Kay. Um, how do you keep track of the rewards that are paid for? So when um, you are on your crowdfunding project, you can log into the back end of the system and it can tell it tells you all of the, the rewards. It's it's actually a We've got some really good statistics that you can see. You can see what people have bought um, and um, you know how much you know what your most popular reward might be and um, you can also see wh who um who like the, the sort of the times that are most popular in terms of um you know if you have a day that's really great you can see that okay i, I sent out a, a mail merge that day and lots of people pledged so you can see what works and you can tailor your campaign to it um you can also at the end download a list of all the people um and the rewards that they they paid for um so you can send them out when when you're ready great thank you um and yeah just time for a couple more questions if anybody's got them if anybody wants to just unmute themselves and jump in with a question please feel free to no you might have answered everything everyone's got questions on Anna can't see can't Anna can I ask a question um so I think some people think that if you and certainly it's been my own concern um some people think that if you're starting out on a project and you may be not very well known in the community or say you're living in a very rural sparsely populated area that it can be quite tricky to crowdfund compared to urban communities that have strong numbers in a close environment. Could you say something about that? Because I think we have quite a spread in, in the room today. Yeah, so um, I would say with with that, I think that um, the important, as I said before, like establishing your, your network and starting to 
build you know warm leads and start chatting to people early on before you you know before you crowdfund you can start having conversations sort of um two to three months before you actually crowdfund to start establishing you know who's going to be interesting and maybe making some some more um connections before you actually crowdfund um and then in terms of um the amount that you raise then to, to make sure that your your target is reflected on the sort of the the, the network that you have at, um and because you can always as i said you can always keep raising funds more but um it's it's really lovely to have a successful campaign so it might be that you do start off with a really small campaign test the community start having those conversations and then you can run run another crowdfunder in six months time and raise a bit more money that might be another option thanks um brendan i just saw one more in the chat and from steve um that says am i just sending my crowdfunding pitch to people in my network or do you spread the word too so um Crowdfunding definitely starts with your own network. Um, we definitely at Crowdfunder shout about um, projects um, as well. Um, but um, as I sort of said at the beginning, there's 200 projects added daily. Um, so it's really important that you, you sort of get your network and your, your crowd behind you. And then, and then hopefully it will sort of um, expand further and um, catch on and people will get um, more you know more more pleasure in the project more i just asked <clears throat> can i just ask a question yeah um if if for instance we we're raising money for a minibus and we set a target for that that price mm -hmm. if you go if it goes over that price obviously as a club with no physical income is that it dictates that we have to spend that money on the minibus um so once you hit your target um you could definitely um maybe add something else to to, to put that extra money towards and to if there's sort of something else on your project that you can put the money towards um and that would i would suggest that instead of um you don't need to sort of put it all towards that that minibus because obviously that's why you raised that five thousand pounds for example in the first place um, so within that time scale you can change what you're actually crowdfunding for so put when, different things on it so when yeah when you um once you hit that that first target um you'll have um another i don't think i've run an example but i can show you that um another paragraph pops onto your project page at the top and it said these you know it says this extra money will go towards right. x y and z so you can do that so that people know that, you know, you're not just going out for a nice lunch or something <laughs> and you're, <laughs> um, and that it is going towards the project. Yeah, because yeah, obviously because of COVID, we've got the minibus money, we will need some more of that and to keep it running. But obviously because we're going to now need to change stuff, we're going to need extra money in a pot to put different regulations in place when we, when we start up again. Yeah yeah so you can definitely um you can definitely also have um a few different things that you know on your project page that you are crowdfunding for it's quite good to have um a particular thing because it makes the story easier yeah. and then add the other things afterwards um if you add sort of this we're going to do this we're going to do this we're going to do this it then can get a bit confusing but um what i've seen before which works quite well is like um displaying it in a quite a simple way on like a pie chart or something saying you know this amount of money is going to go towards the minibus and then this amount of money is going to go into sorting this other part of the the project out yeah thank you no problem um perfect i think um we might have to wrap up um i just um wanted to say quickly that i've popped a link in the chat for our um 
Facebook group, so um, sorry, a Facebook page, uh, which is where we're posting all of our workshops and talks. So if you are interested in these, please have a look at that. Um, and I'm also just going to add in a quick survey link. Um, the only way we can get any kind of feedback from these sessions is via a survey. Um, so it would be really helpful if you guys could fill it in. It just takes two minutes um, and just tells us what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, um, if there's anything that we could do better. So I'll post that link. And if you don't mind filling it in, that'd be really, really helpful. Um, I think we've just about answered everyone's chats and um, chats questions <laughs> I've just seen a question from Steve about expanding um, networks um, we won't share people's details on here Steve but if you wanted to pop yours in the chat please do um, we've done quite a few sessions on um, network building some of which are um, on our YouTube page uh, so you can watch previous videos so do have a look at those they might be helpful um, and if not you can email me and I can send them send you links to those if you can't find them um, but I think um, that's just about it. lots of people saying thank you so Anna huge huge thank you from us um, it's been brilliant really really insightful um, and I think oh as we can see lots of people have found it really really helpful um, so yeah look out for um, our follow-up notes and um, we hope to see you guys at another session soon Thank you then. Bye bye. <laughs> no problem. Thanks for joining everybody. Yeah, everybody.